But even so, we're still here to worship the Lord and praise the Lord, and uh, hopefully we'll also sound good too. Anyway, a couple of announcements, uh, I think. Uh, yes, this, uh, today we'll be having a meal after church uh, in celebration both of Valentine's Day and also the Super Bowl, kind of a, a two for one. So thank you, Chris, for uh, getting that meal together. So everyone's welcome to that. It's uh, in the uh, fellowship hall just uh, out to the right there, and uh, you, can, you can follow the crowd. Uh, but that'll be directly after the service. Uh, also, um, in a few weeks or, or in, in a pretty, pretty soon here, we don't have an exact date yet, but this is just to, to get something, get it rolling around in your minds. We'll be starting uh, confirmation here pretty soon, uh, but uh, it'll be more like a confirmation that is open to everyone. I mean, how long has it been since many of you were confirmed? A little while, I think. Uh, it's been, oh, how long has it been for me? Um, I don't know, 15 years or something? Maybe that's wrong. It's been a while since I've been confirmed. Uh, Angela was telling me the other day that it's been, how long, Angela? I don't remember. 1951 since a Angela was confirmed. So it's been a little while for a lot of us. Uh, so if you would, you are all very welcome to, to join in on the on confirmation and to renew your, your faith and to go over the basics once again uh, to, uh, yeah, to, to study again uh, the core of the gospel and the good news that Christ has saved us. And so uh, be on the lookout for more information about that uh, in the coming weeks. I think that's it for the announcements, uh, except that, uh, yes, finally, finally, we will be, uh, the sermon today will be on 1 Corinthians chapter 3, uh, and it'll be about... Well, Paul is talking about division, and he's talking about uh, talking to the Corinthians about those who are living according to the flesh and those who are living according to the Spirit, and how there are divisions among us that prevent the Spirit from working. So we're going to hear about uh, how the Spirit breaks through our divisions uh, in our sermon today. With that, I think uh, we are ready to begin. So let's begin with our opening song, uh, which is Only by Grace, found on the first page of your bulletin. God bless your worship today.
We begin in the name of our God, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please rise. We rise for a time of confession, where we confess our sins, uh, knowing that we are sinful, and that uh, from the time of Adam and Eve, who the first sinners, uh, we have been sinning ever since, and that sin has created a barrier, a divide between us and God, but Jesus came to heal that divide, to break down those barriers, and he, uh, he has promised in 1 John that if we confess our sins to God, put our faith in Jesus, then he will forgive us our sins, and so let's confess our sins together. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let's then take a moment silently to confess our sins to God. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your presence and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son, Jesus, to die for you, and for his sake he forgives you all of your sins. He was a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority I therefore forgive you all of your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us speak now the words of Psalm 119 responsively. Blessed are those whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his testimonies, who seek him with their whole heart, who also do no wrong, but walk in his ways. You have commanded your precepts to be kept diligently. Oh, that my ways may be steadfast in keeping your statutes. Then I will not be put to shame, having my eyes fixed on all your commandments. I praise you with an upright heart when I learn your just and righteous decrees. I will keep your statutes, do not utterly forsake me. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We'll now sing our next song. Shine, Jesus Shine. Is that right? Yeah, there it is. <laughs>
Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Lord, graciously hear the prayers of your people, that we who justly suffer the consequences of our sin may be mercifully delivered by your goodness to the glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading of God's Word. The Old Testament reading for today, the sixth Sunday after Epiphany, is from Deuteronomy 30, verses 15 and following. See, I have set before you today life and good, death, death, and evil. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God that I command you today by loving the Lord your God, by walking in his ways, and by keeping his commandments and his statutes and his rules, then you shall live and multiply, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you are entering to take possession of it. But if your heart turns away, and you will not hear, but are drawn away to worship other gods and serve them, I declare to you today that you shall surely perish. You shall not live long in the land that you are going over the Jordan to enter and possess. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessing and curse. Therefore choose life that you and your offspring may live loving the Lord your God, obeying his voice and holding fast to him. For he is your life and length of days, that you may dwell in the land that the Lord swore to your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give them. This is the word of the Lord. Our epistle lesson is from 1 Corinthians verse, uh, chapter 3. But I, brothers, could not address you as spiritual people, but as people of the flesh, as infants in Christ. I fed you with milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for it. And even now you are not yet ready, for you are still of the flesh. For while there is jealousy and strife among you, are you not of the flesh and behaving only in a human way? For when one says, I follow Paul, and another, I follow Apollos, you are, not, are you not being merely human? What then is Apollos? What is Paul? Servants through whom you believed, as the Lord assigned to each. I planted Apollos, wondered, but God gave the growth. So neither he who plants nor he who waters is anything, but only God who gives the growth. He who plants and he who waters are one, and each will receive his wages according to his labor. For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field, God's building. This is the word of the Lord.
to St. Matthew, the fifth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. You have heard that it was said to those of old, You shall not murder, and whoever murders will be liable to judgment. But I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. Whoever insults his brother will be liable to counsel, and whoever says, You fool, will be liable to the hell of fire. So if you are offering your gift at the altar, and there remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift there before the altar and go. First be reconciled to your brother, and then come and offer your gift. Come to terms quickly with your accuser while you are going with him to court, lest your accuser hand you over to the judge, and the judge to the guard, and you be put in prison. Truly I say to you, you will never get out until you have paid the last penny. You have heard that it was said, you shall not commit murder. And I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman, sorry, commit adultery. My, my mistake. Let me start that paragraph over again. You have heard it said, Jesus says, that you shall not commit adultery. But I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lustful intent has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye causes you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. For it is better that you lose one of your members than that your whole body be thrown into hell. And if your right hand causes you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. For it is better that you lose one of your members than that your whole body go down into hell. It was also said, whoever divorces his wife, let him give her a certificate of divorce. But I say to you that everyone who divorces his wife, except on the ground of sexual immorality, makes her commit adultery. And whoever marries a divorced woman commits adultery. Again, you have heard that it was said to those of old, You shall not swear falsely, but shall perform to the Lord what you have sworn. But I say to you, do not take an oath at all, either by heaven, for it is the throne of God, or by earth, for it is his footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the great city of the great king. Do not take an oath on your head, for you cannot even make one hair white or black. Let what you say be simply yes or no. Anything more than this comes from evil. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Grace, Grace to you, O Christ. Please be seated now uh, for a brief children's message. So I, and are there are any children? We love children here at, at St. Paul, and if there are any children, uh, you're welcome to come up. I think I see Addie's eyes poking over the pew. Uh, she doesn't have to come, but you know. All right, wonderful. Yeah. You can come on up, Addie. Why don't you guys have a seat right there? Is that okay? All right. So today, uh, actually at the very beginning of the service, we were talking a little bit about uh, music, right? Because I said that Darlene's guitar wasn't working and my guitar broke a string. So we have music. And when we play music, uh, we have to, uh, you know, we have to all stay together. Uh, and if we're not together, then uh, it's not going to work out very well. So. Kevin's our drummer, and when Kevin's putting down a beat, uh, would you lay a beat put down for us real fast, Kevin? So if he's putting down this beat, but then I'm on the guitar and I'm playing way faster than him, it's not going to work out very well. Uh, so if I'm playing guitar and I'm keeping with Kevin's beat, it's, it goes really nice. But then Jeff starts playing and he decides that he wants to play a completely different song. So he starts playing Jesus Loves Me while we're playing Shine, Jesus Shine. Do you think that would work out very well? No, it would not. It wouldn't sound very good. So we all have to stay together. We all have to play the instruments to the same beat. And so, in a way, uh, our, our, uh, one of our Bible stories today was about uh, Paul telling people that when, uh, when they're not together, when there's, where there is strife and 
jealousy or division, when they're not sticking together, then things don't go very well. And so we can think like Jesus is our drummer. And so if Jesus is laying down a beat, you lay down a beat. If Jesus is laying down this beat, we got to stick with the beat. We've got to play the instruments along with Jesus. And when we do, when we believe in Jesus and stick with Jesus' beat, then things, uh, things are right. Things are going uh, smoothly. Because uh, when we stick with Jesus, Jesus gives us the words of eternal life. Because Jesus died on the cross and Jesus rose from the dead. And when we stick with Jesus' beat, then we also uh, will rise and live in eternal life. So let's pray and thank God for, uh, for giving us the beat, which is in the Bible, and uh, help us to follow that beat. Lord Jesus, we thank you for being the word, uh, and for, in a way, being our drummer, for leading us along in, uh, in the way that we should go, for giving us the words of eternal life. And so as we live our lives, Lord, as we play our instruments and, and go along uh, living in lives of faith, help us to keep in step with you, keep in line with your beat and with your word, so that we can all live together uh, in perfect harmony uh, in the eternal, uh, into eternal life with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for coming up, Addy. You guys have a, a wonderful rest of worship. We'll continue now with our next song, which is This Little Light of Mine. Oh, oh, are we having an action leader? All right, wonderful. Man, impromptu, impromptu action leader. Okay, wonderful. Thank you. With this song. Perfect time. All right, let's do it.
grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, our Father, and our Lord, our Savior, our light, Jesus Christ, who gives us the light of the gospel to show us the way, uh, the beat of his, his music to lead us along the path to eternal life. And so let's pray and ask God to continue to shine his light into our lives. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the blessing of gathering together to hear your word preached and read and to be led along by your light. And so, Lord, as we uh, discuss division and times of darkness today, we ask that you would penetrate our darkness with your light and to break through our discord uh, with your music and lead us on uh, into the way of eternal life. In Jesus' name, amen. There is a story about a superhero who gets his powers when he is just a kid. He's a kid, and his powers suddenly manifest themselves in his life. But his power is so strong that whenever he uses it, he hurts himself. Whenever he tries to punch something with his power, it breaks his arm. If he just tries to jump, it hurts his legs. And if he tried to use all of his power all at once, he would blow himself apart. His power is just too strong for him, too, too much for him to handle at first. But his mentor teaches him to control his power. Before he is able to use his power, he has to train his body in the simplest way possible. He has to make himself stronger so that he doesn't blow himself apart. So he just has to do the basics. He has to run, lift weights, just do regular body exercise to make his body stronger and more mature so that finally he'll be ready to start using his power without destroying himself. We also have been given a power, and it is even more powerful than the one uh, that we've just described. We have the power of God in us. We have the power of the gospel, the light of the gospel in our lives. We believe in Jesus Christ, that through his death and through his resurrection, we have the power of eternal life. Through our baptism, we were brought through death and into life. We were given the Holy Spirit, the power of the gospel to live in our lives. And this is the power that we all have united together as the body of Christ, this power of God lives in us. But unfortunately, our body doesn't always seem very strong. Paul tells the Corinthian Christians that they are still weak. They're just babies in their faith, he says. They aren't even able to eat solid food yet. They're only able to drink milk. They aren't able to hear the deeper things of God because they're still weak. In their faith. Their body is still weak. They're still living according to the flesh, he says, still being fleshy. And they're not living according to the spirit. All they can have is milk because they aren't spiritually mature. And when we read this text, I think the question that we inevitably ask ourselves is, are we spiritually mature? Are we living according to the flesh or according to the spirit? Are we being fleshy or spiritual? It's a good question, and it's kind of a hard question, because unfortunately, as I said before, sometimes our body doesn't seem very strong. Sometimes we still act fleshy with one another. Our body is still weak. And even though we have the great power of God working all around us, we're too weak to use it. Too often, our body gets blown apart, because Paul says that wherever there is jealousy and strife, Wherever there is contention or discord, then we're being fleshy. We're being weak. We're living according to the flesh. In other words, not living according to the Spirit. Whenever there's jealousy and strife amongst us, whenever there's division amongst us, then the Spirit can't work because we're too weak and the power of God will blow us apart. The Spirit can't work, or at least we're hindering His work amongst us. And that's a pretty sobering thought. So we ask ourselves, do we have divisions? Is there jealousy and strife amongst us? Well, of course, there are divisions all over the place in our lives, but let's be clear about what divisions Paul is talking about. Or rather, let's begin by pointing out what divisions Paul is not talking about, because there are divisions in many of areas of our lives. We have divisions with friends who begin to live lives that we can't partake of. We're making decisions that we can't condone, and a, a barrier, a divide starts to grow between us. We have divisions in our families, with siblings who start to make bad decisions or go down a sinful path. 
who cut themselves off from the rest of the family. There's a divide that grows. With children who have wandered away from the faith, a barrier exists. A rift grows. Division happens. And as sad as these things are, these are not the divides that Paul is talking about. We pray that God would, would uh, we wish and pray that God would heal these divides, but this isn't the divides. These are not the divides that Paul is talking about in this verse. Because as sad as those divisions are, those kinds of divisions are necessary. Because when we are brought into God's family, we're set apart from the rest of the world. The people of Israel were, were marked as God's people to live differently than all the nations around them, to live differently than the rest of the world. And God, God tells us in his word that we are the new Israel. Through baptism, we have been brought into God's family. And so we're set apart from the rest of the world to live differently than the rest of the world. And that means that there's divisions between us and others, even from our own family members who turn away from this way of life for a way of life that seems easier, maybe seems more pleasant. But as sad as these divisions are, they are necessary because we are part of God's family. But sadly, even that family is pretty dysfunctional at times because there are divisions amongst us Christians as well, even divisions amongst us LCMS Lutherans, and even divisions with our own brothers and sisters in the faith, in this city, in this district. There is jealousy and strife and division amongst us, and the Spirit has a hard time working. And so what are our divisions? Well, some of you may have heard of the recent release of the new edition of the Large Catechism from CPH. If you haven't, that's okay. Don't worry about it. It's, uh, I would not have known about it had I not stumbled upon it, uh, stumbled upon the controversy that has existed and starts swirling around the release of this book. Without boring you with all the details, the short of it is that right when it was released, a few people kind of cherry-picked a few paragraphs and phrases out of this 752-page book, and they cried wolf that the LCMS is changing the catechism and teaching false doctrine, and the whole world of online Lutheranism threw itself into a frenzy. False accusations and hasty condemnations and hateful denunciations were being cast around from all sides, and the worst of it is hardly anybody had actually read the book. In the end, it was temporarily recalled, reviewed again, and then re-released because, as President Harrison said, I've had time to reevaluate the controverted sentences and found that while some things may have been expressed more clearly, nevertheless, there is nothing in the content of the volume promoting any theological position at odds with biblical and confessional Lutheranism. Now, whatever one's opinion on the content of the book, the way we conducted ourselves during this debacle was, it was terrible. This is no way for Christians to act toward anybody, let alone our own brothers and sisters in the faith. It would be pretty hard to defend ourselves if Paul were to write to us, accusing us of division. But that isn't the only example. If we look at our seminaries, Sorry to say that there is more than just a friendly rivalry over the annual basketball game. From the faculty to the student body to pastors and lay people all around the synod, there are people that feel divided. There's discord amongst us over the seminary. Oh, well, we would never call a pastor from that seminary. So which seminary did you go to? Oh, whew, good. That's the good one, the real one, the right seminary, not the other seminary. And I'm not actually being coy by not naming either Fort Wayne or St. Louis out loud because I hear the same kinds of comments and animosities directed at both seminaries from both sides. But finally, and closest to home, I'm sorry to say that there is division amongst us, in our own district, in our own circuit, in our own city. Out there you might hear people mention St. Paul, and they do so with maybe just a hint of animosity or a veiled disdain because maybe we're too loose with some of our practices or they don't approve of the way that we do certain things and an invisible wall gets erected between us and them. But then we're just as bad. The name of a certain congregation or a certain pastor from our own area comes up, answers conversation, and we push them away 
because they're too traditional. They don't do things the way we like them to be done. Others judge us, but then we pride ourselves on being different. We pride ourselves on holding too tightly to our history and our practices as if our identity lies in the way that we have done things, lies in us being St. Paul Lutheran Church, Melrose Park, instead of being Christians, instead of being the body of Christ. We have the power of God, but it kind of seems like this power is too great for us, and it keeps blowing us apart. But that's what sin does. From the very beginning, from the very first sin, it built a wall. It made a divide, a rift between God and humanity. And so Adam and Eve hid. They hid from God. They were made in the image of God. They had the power of God, but then sin came and tore apart their relationship with God. It was blown apart. It turns out that no one was able to wield the power of God except God himself. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. There is no one who does good, not even one. The only one who was able to wield the power of God was God. And that's why God came down to earth as a human. He broke down the wall. He jumped over the rift that had existed between God and humanity. Jesus came, wielding the power of God. And with that power, he destroyed all the barriers that exist between us and God and between each other. By his death on the cross, he tore open the temple curtain and opened the divide between us and God. When he burst from the tomb, he burst open the doors of death that were keeping us from God. And through faith in Jesus Christ, by the power of the Spirit, through the waters of baptism, we have passed through the curtain. We've walked through the doors of death and out of the empty tomb into new life. And so here we are in the new life, trying to wield the power of God. And it seems like we keep blowing things apart. But that's because we're just still not strong enough yet. We still aren't mature enough just yet. In the story, the young hero trains his body. He strengthens his body until he's strong enough, mature enough to use that great power. And he does it through the basics. He runs, he lifts weights, makes his body strong. And then he's finally able to start using his power. But even then, it's still a long road. Even when he starts to use his power, he continues to train, continues to work hard so that he can get stronger and more mature and then finally be able to use his power to its full potential. So brothers and sisters in Christ, we are in Christ. We are the body of Christ, but sometimes we're still a little weak. We need training. We need to keep doing the basics. Continue to study God's word, to read it on our own, in our own devotional lives, to come here and hear it read, hear it preached into our lives, to come to Bible study, to go to confirmation class and review your faith once again, to renew your faith once again, to grow in faith alongside our brothers and sisters, to eat and drink the sacrament together alongside our brothers and sisters, because God has promised to send us his spirit to teach us, to strengthen our faith, and to bind us together more and more as the body of Christ. We are sometimes still a little weak, but thank God he has decided to use the weak things of this world to shame the strong. And when we are weak, then we are strong. We're strong if we hold on to Christ. Because Jesus loves me, this I know, and we little ones to him belong. We are weak, but he is strong. And he will continue to strengthen us through his word and the sacraments, through the good, basic gospel that we need to hear again and again. That Christ was born, Christ has died. That Christ has risen, he is risen indeed. Alleluia. We need to hear again the pure, simple gospel, that we were sinners, that we were separated from God, divided from each other, but God saw our sinful state, and he sent his son to bridge the divide to die on the cross and to rise from the dead, to bring us across the chasm of death into life together as his body. We need to keep training the basics of the gospel so that the body of Christ can continue to be strengthened until the day when the Lord finally returns. And we shall all be united again, together, together again in perfect unity. But until then, 
We pray, O oh, come, desire of nations, bind in one the hearts of all my, mankind. Bid thou our sad divisions cease, and be thyself our king of peace. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel has come to us, and he shall come to us. But until he does, until Jesus comes again, may we continue to walk in a manner worthy of our calling, with humility and gentleness, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. For there is one body and one Spirit, and we have all been called to the one hope in our one Lord Jesus Christ, the hope of, the, of eternal life. We've all been called to that one gospel. And it is that gospel that we're about to sing now in our next song. So I'll invite the band to come back together. This next song is called, There is One Gospel, the one gospel that unites us together. And this is a, an unfamiliar one, likely, to most of you, or maybe all of you. And so it's a pretty easy one, so feel free to sing. But if you'd like, just listen to the first three verses. But then let's all join together on the fourth verse the fourth verse which says, in this gospel, the church is one. We do not walk alone. We have his spirit as we press on to lead us safely home. Let's sing. Savior, I take my eyes, my 
please rise for prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gospel that binds us together as one, as the one body of Christ. We pray that we would continue to hear your word and that you would send us your spirit again and again, that we would remember our baptism that has bound us together and brought us into your family. So help us more and more to act as that family, to treat one another with love and respect, and that we would all be led on by your spirit, led on by the light of Christ, to continue until the day of eternal life. But until that day comes, Lord, help us here to treat one another with love, and to spread the good news of that one gospel to the rest of the world. Bless your church as it continues to preach the good news. Raise up faithful pastors and church workers to continue to strengthen the people in faith, to hold to the one gospel, to hold to the truth of your word. Be with all those around the world and in our communities that are still living in darkness. Use us as instruments to bring the light of Christ into their lives to bring their their lives into communion with you, to break down the barriers that exist between humanity and you, to lead them also into the band of eternal life. Lord, we know that many are among us and many around the world continue to suffer in this world, suffer with sickness and illness and hardship. Especially today, we pray that you would be with Marie and Ed, Lois and Layla, Michael, Edie, and Don. Bless all of them, Lord, strengthen them in their faith. And as they suffer, help them to know that the sufferings of this present age do not compare with the glories that shall be revealed when you come again and bring us all into eternal life where there will be no more sickness or sadness or crying or pain, that we will all be with you and we will be together to live a perfect eternal life. Strengthen us and keep us until that day, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us now confess our faith, the faith that we have together, the one gospel in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again, He ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We have now confessed our faith in our God. Let us go to him, knowing that the way has been opened for us by our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray the prayers that the prayer that Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Receive the Lord's blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace. Amen. Close now with our final song, You Only.